9-5 extension, cross-sections of three-dimensional figures. Going to be quick notes here. You can see our standard down here, not a prioritized, but 7G3. Our vocab today is only the word we're talking about, a cross-section. A cross-section is the two-dimensional shape that is the intersection of a plane and what we're looking at today is a solid. All the things we've been looking at, a triangular pyramid or triangular prism, a rectangular prism, a pentagonal pyramid, any type of three-dimensional object. Here's our solid. It is a rectangular prism. And when we talk about the intersection of a plane, we're referring to this thing right here, almost as if we're taking a piece of paper and putting it into it. So that's what we mean by plane. Not this, but this little thing here. Again, it's like a piece of paper plane cutting through it. Not an airplane, but a piece of paper plane. And the cross section then is the shape that we see in here that they so nicely color for us, even though it's slightly slanted, the shape we see here is a rectangle. That's the cross section of that shape. So when we look at this again, we're gonna look at the plane, not this plane, but the plane, this paper that's been kind of forced into it or sliced. I've also got a video I'll share as well called the Slice Master 3000 or something like that from YouTube where they slice things and then look at the top. That's basically what we're doing is we're cutting this right here where that plane is. And then it's saying, what shape would you see on top if you were able to look at this? Triangle. That is describing the cross section. Same thing, if you took a pyramid and you cut it using a plane, that type of plane, not this plane, that plane, and this one can be a little tricky, whether we call it a rectangle or a square, I'm gonna lean more towards that this one is a square or a square pyramid. You can kind of look at the bottom and see, they'll make sure to very much pronounce one end. If it's going to be a rectangle, it'll be definitely be longer. Otherwise, down here, we can definitely tell when we talk about this plane cutting through it, almost as if you were just, just to slice this and remove this front piece here. But would you see what shape? You can see it nicely outlined in purple. Yep, it's a rectangle, a rectangular prism having a rectangle cross section, a triangular prism up here, having a triangle cross-section. Down here we have a cylinder, so again, taking this plane as if we were gonna chop it right here, whoosh, and then we were gonna look at that top part of that cylinder, we would see this shape, which again, remember here looks like an oval, but because it's a cylinder, it's actually a circle. So the cross-section here, when we take a plane through it, is a circle as if we chop it and cut it in half and we're looking at what we saw. It says sketch and describe the intersection of a horizontal plane, not this type of plane, but a piece of paper with a square pyramid. Now, this is important. It's telling us the bottom down here is a square. Doesn't quite look like it, but it is. We have a horizontal plane which goes like the horizon, left to right. Don't think of it as up and down. That is wrong. We just want to cut it horizontally. So if you were to take a plane or a piece of paper, or if you were just to cut it just like this. So again, if you wanted to draw the plane, you could draw it in like this. We get this cross section in here. That would look like this. This cross section, because it's horizontal, it's gonna look just like the base does. Even though this base here looks different, we are told it's a square. So sketch, it says, all right, so since it says to sketch, I'll uh, sketch a square, and then describe it, it is a square intersection. Nice on these where they have the little purple and you can see it on our worksheets and sometimes on other things like homework or IXL, they don't always shade this in as purple. So you might have to look at it on a quiz or something, you can trace it on the paper. Please don't trace it in your in your textbook or on your computer as well if you're doing IXL, but you can kind of use your finger to go around it. Otherwise, that's the lesson that I can describe the intersection of planes and solids.